there, my name is Eileen Cervantes Del Toro and I am the Nutrition Services Manager at Movable Feast. And we are joined today by one of our dietetic interns. Her name is Brie Pruden and she has a special treat for us today. Um, we're doing a quarantine cuisine sort of cooking, if you will. And she will be demonstrating a chicken fajita pasta. Um, and we'll also have some nutritional tips as well as some other recipes that she would like to share a little bit uh, with you today. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and let Brie take it away. Thank you all for joining us. Okay, hi everyone. Um, like Eileen said, thank you for joining us. My name is Brie. I am um, a dietetic intern and I'm working with Movable Feast this week. So it's been a really great week and I'm glad to end it this way with all of you. Um, so obviously we know a lot's changed in the world recently. People are home a lot more. People's cooking and eating habits have changed um, a lot. They might have more people at home throughout the day to cook for. Um, and life can get really busy and hectic now. So we just wanted to provide you some fun, healthy quarantine recipes that um, you could try out. And the great thing about all of them is they can all be made in one pot or one pan. So super simple, easy cleanup, it's what we all want. Um, and so today we're gonna be making one of them. It's a chicken fajita pasta. And I chose this dish because this one is um, one that me and my family eat a lot. Um, we used to always go to Chili's all the time and we would always get fajitas. Um, but hypertension does run in my family um, and my mom, my dad, my sister, my grandparents, everyone has it. Um, so once they kind of developed that, they felt like they couldn't have their fajitas anymore um, from Chili's because they were so high in sodium. Um, so I was really looking for a recipe that could kind of make a more balanced meal out of fajitas and um, have a little bit less sodium. So um, this is what I came up with and it's something that we eat all the time. So I hope that you guys enjoy it and we'll try making it. Uh, so the first step is to cook the chicken, which since we had a little bit of technical difficulties, I already um, made the chicken. So you can see here, I just cut it up into like little um, kind of like bite-sized pieces and um, put some spices on it. All right. Um, and I used boneless, skinless uh, chicken breasts, but um, you can definitely use frozen chicken. Just make sure you defrost it beforehand. You can um, use pre-cooked chicken. Uh, my mom buys that a lot. Um, so I use that when I make it at her house. And um, if you're gonna do that, you just don't have to cook it as long. Um, so I just sauteed the chicken in a little bit of oil with some spices, cooked it until there was no more pink in the middle. Um, and then I took that out of the pot and the next step is we're gonna add some veggies. Um, so do that now. We have um, peppers, onions, and um, like all different kinds of red bell peppers, uh, red, green, yellow, and I added a little bit of garlic too, just because I have a lot right now and um, I really like garlic. So we're just gonna throw this into the pot mix it up a little bit. And you just wanna cook these down until the onions are a little bit, um, a little bit see-through and the peppers are a little bit softer. You don't have to cook them all the way right now because they're gonna be cooked a little bit more um, throughout the rest of the meal. Um, so I just wanted to go back, talk a little bit about the chicken. Um, you definitely don't have to use chicken for this recipe. You can use plenty of other protein sources. I substitute um, shrimp for the chicken a lot. It's a really great source of lean protein. Um, I usually buy it frozen and that's great because you could buy it in larger quantities. It lasts a while and it's usually a little bit cheaper than buying it fresh. Um, so that's a really great option. You could also use steak, fish, uh, ground turkey, ground chicken, uh, lean ground beef. Those would all be great options that would work really well. And if you wanted a vegetarian source of protein, that would also work. Um, I've made this recipe with tofu, tempeh, and sometimes I just use black beans. Um, 
I'll buy them sand, I'll drain them, rinse them, and then I throw them in um, towards the end of the recipe instead of cooking them in the beginning. Um, so those are all great options. You might just have to think about adjusting the cooking time if you're going to use a different protein source because uh, shrimp, for example, cooks a lot faster than chicken does. So just thinking about that if you're going to make any substitutions. Um, okay, so we have the peppers and onions cooking right now. I'll show you what they look like when they're um, about done. I'll just give them a quick stir right now. Um, and so I use fresh peppers and onions here, uh, but you definitely don't have to. Um, I've used frozen uh, peppers and onions before. They sell them in mixed bags. Um, and they're super convenient. It saves you a lot of prep time and having to cut up um, vegetables. And it's nice because you could just leave them in the freezer for a while. And if you're not sure when you want to use them. Um, so that's a really convenient option. And if you're going to use frozen ones, you can just throw them in the pot frozen the same way and um, cook them down. It'll just take a little bit longer. And then there might be some extra liquid from them. So in the later step, when we add milk, if you're going to use frozen vegetables, you might just want to cut down on the amount of milk a little bit. Um, and then at this point, sometimes I add lots of other vegetables, too. Um, I've added broccoli, string beans, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, spinach, uh, tomatoes. Pretty much anything works in here, any vegetables that you like, any ones that you just have laying around the house, if they're gonna go bad soon, you can just throw them right in and um, it just helps to bulk up the meal a little bit, get in some extra vitamins and minerals in there. Um, so you can really do anything with it. Uh, fresh vegetables, frozen vegetables, I tend to, um, do frozen broccoli with this recipe a lot or spinach. Um, I'll usually add the spinach in around the end of the recipe um, since that cooks pretty quickly um, instead of adding it now, but it's still a great option. Um, and then sometimes I top it with avocado once everything's done. Um, it really goes with the flavor profile of the meal and um, is a little bit healthier than adding some extra cheese or sour cream or something like that since avocado has lots of um, those healthy fats that we really want in there. Um, so that is also a great option. Really, the possibilities are endless for whatever vegetables you want to add to this dish. Um, it's really versatile in that sense and lots of things work. So I'll show you guys um, what the peppers and onions are looking like right now. So you can see here, the onions are a little bit um, clear. The peppers are a little bit softer. So this is um, really what we want at this point. Um, they don't have to be cooked all the way. And same with the chicken too. They're going to um, get cooked a quite a bit more later on in the recipe after we add the liquid and everything. Um, so now that the peppers and onions are looking good, we're gonna add um, the chicken back in. And so earlier when I cooked the chicken, I um, had it in a separate bowl and then I put it in this clean bowl after I cooked it to avoid any cross contamination with bacteria from the raw chicken. So that's definitely a really important step um, just so we don't get sick from our chicken. So I'm gonna add the chicken back in with the peppers and onions. Just mix that up a little bit. And so at this point you can add um, either fajita sauce or a spice mix. Um, so I decided to do a spice mix because I didn't have any fajita sauce and um, sometimes it's more convenient if you don't have all the spices and it might be cheaper just to buy one bottle of fajita sauce and all different spices. Um, but I like to use the spices because it's a little bit of um, a healthier option, doesn't have any sugar added, and you can control how much sodium you put in it, which of course is really important for me since I um, try to limit that to, because of my family history with hypertension. Um, so 
In this, I just put some pepper, garlic powder, chili powder, um, cumin, uh, paprika, and cayenne pepper. Um, so I didn't add any salt because I tend not to try to add any extra salt when I'm cooking um, because there's already hidden sources of sodium in this meal. There's some sodium in the chicken, there's some sodium in the pasta already, in the milk, in the cheese. Um, so just trying to limit that. Um, and you still get a really great flavor with all of these spices combined. Uh, so right now I just put the spices onto the peppers and chicken and I'm just mixing it well to incorporate it in. Um, so I'll show you guys what that looks like. So you can see it got really colorful, lots of vegetables, and yeah, it's looking good. So now at this point, we could add the pasta and um, the milk. So I'm using whole grain um, penny pasta. Let's see here, you could just put um, the whole box in. And I'm putting the pasta in first so that the milk doesn't splash all over me um, when I put that in. So I measured this beforehand, but this is um, five cups of milk. So I'm using 1% milk because that is just what I had. Uh, the recipe does call for skim milk, but um, I had this, so I'm going to use that. And it will change the nutritional composition of the meal a little bit. Um, it will have a little bit more fat when I'm using 1% milk as compared to skim milk, uh, specifically a little bit more saturated fat um, because skim milk has zero fat in it, but 1% milk has um, two and a half grams of fat and one and a half grams of saturated fat per cup. Um, so when you're adding five cups of milk like that, it can make a little bit of a difference, um, but we definitely, want to try to use skim or 1% um, since those have less saturated fat and that is important um, for our heart health. So um, if you were using say whole milk, for example, that would be a pretty big difference than the skim milk because whole milk has eight grams of fat per cup um, compared to the zero grams in skim milk. So that would make pretty significant difference when you're adding that much milk. Um, and you definitely don't have to use um, regular milk. Like I'm using a lactose-free milk right now, um, but you can use soy milk or almond milk. I've never tried it with a dairy alternative, but I don't think it would change the flavor profile of the meal too much. Um, and then sometimes I actually, if I don't have uh, five cups of milk, because that's kind of a lot, um, I'll just do two or three cups of milk and do the remainder of the liquid as um, water or chicken stock. And that um, always works out fine. It um, cooks the pasta a little bit better. And um, the only difference is it's not quite as creamy as using um, all milk, but it definitely helps to have a little bit of a lower calorie option and a little bit less fat if you wanted to substitute any of the milk for water or a different liquid. So. Um, let's see. So we're just going to simmer this for about 20 minutes. Um, it's really cool that you can cook the pasta right into the sauce. The milk will actually thicken up a lot and it will cook the pasta as, um, as it thickens. Um, so yeah. Just kind of let that simmer and you want to mix it every few minutes so that the pasta doesn't stick or anything like that. Okay. Um, and now I know I mentioned I used whole grain pasta. Um, this is something that I like to do because um, I kind of think that regular pasta tastes really plain. I think whole grain gives more texture, more flavor. Um, but if you never tried it, I would definitely recommend testing it out, seeing what you think. Um, I know my sister isn't a huge fan of whole grain pasta, so it might not be for everyone, 
Um, but it does have lots of health benefits. It provides much more fiber than regular pasta and um, lots of nutrients in there too as well. So it's a really great option. And then, um, you know, something that I really love about this meal, which I've kind of already alluded to throughout, is that it's just so versatile. You could substitute so many things. Um, you know, different protein sources, the different milks, add in different vegetables. So pretty much every time I make it, it never tastes the same. There's always something different that I'm throwing in. And I really like that because then I never get bored with the meal. Um, so I think that's a really important thing um, with recipes for me is being able to change things up. And it's still coming out good. Um, so this is definitely one of those meals that you could do that with. Um, and of course, the other thing I really love about this meal is it's really um, well balanced nutrient wise and, um, you know, has less sodium than the typical fajitas my family would eat. Um, so I'll just go through, talk about each ingredient a little bit, what that's providing and um, what that means for our health pretty much. So the chicken in this recipe is a really great source of protein. And it's also a lean source of protein, um, which means that it has a lot of protein, but not a lot of um, not a lot of fat. Specifically, not a lot of saturated fat in there. Um, some other lean cuts of meat include um, any chicken or turkey without the skin. When you add the skin, it gets a little bit higher in fat. Um, chicken breasts tend to be a little bit leaner than chicken thighs or wings. Um, and then red meat and pork, you could also include that too. There's leaner cuts like tenderloin or sirloin and top round. Um, and so why is this important? We definitely want to try to get in lean protein sources because there's less saturated fat in them. Um, and saturated fat is associated with the development of heart disease like um, coronary artery disease, which could lead to plaque buildup in your arteries and it keeps your blood from flowing through them normally. Um, so this could lead to increased risk of heart attack or strokes. Um, so saturated fats definitely really important to limit in our diet. Um, another way to do this besides for choosing leaner cuts is limiting our portion sizes. Um, so the recommended portion size for protein is three ounces, which is about um, a deck of cards. Think about that big. I wish I had a deck of cards to um, show you guys, but I don't think I have one here. Um, but I think everyone probably knows or could Google the size of a deck of cards to kind of get a visual representation of that um, in their head. And um, there's also some research to suggest when eating um, uh, beef, steak, ground meat, grass fed, and organic meats have a healthier fat distribution, they have more omega-3 fats compared to omega-6s. And omega-3s are really um, important for heart health, for brain function, and they help to lower our cholesterol. So those are super, um, you know, that might be a little bit of a healthier choice than choosing regular beef. And then when Thinking about meat or protein sources, um, we want to think a little bit about sustainability as well, um, reducing the amount of meat we eat and cutting back on portion sizes is really um, the best way to um, make more sustainable choices when eating meat. It helps to reduce carbon emissions and decrease um, our water use. Um, and then also just thinking about what kinds of meats or protein sources we're eating. Uh, for example, chicken and fish have a smaller environmental impact than beef or lamb or pork. So um, that's definitely something to consider. And um, which we've kind of talked a little bit about before, there's lots of other options for vegetarian sources of um, protein, plant-based proteins like tofu, tempeh, um, beans, legumes, lentils, those are all great sources of plant-based proteins. And then um, today there's also tons of meat alternatives available on the market. Um, there's like Impossible Burgers and Beyond Meat has um, 
lots of different options for burgers, sausage, crumbles, all kinds of stuff um, that is, it really tastes great. So there's lots of options there. And then um, the milk and cheese in this recipe, we already added the milk and we'll add the cheese at the end, but this is a really great source of protein, calcium and vitamin D. Um, calcium and vitamin D is important for bone health. Um, it helps to prevent osteoporosis and our bones breaking down later in life. Um, and then, like I kind of already mentioned, choosing skim or dairy, um, I mean, skim or reduced fat dairy products helps to um, just reduce the amount of saturated fat we're getting from a meal or recipe. And, um, and again, that's the saturated fat is linked to heart disease. And so that's why we want to limit that in our diet. And then we have, today we added peppers and onions, and these are a really great source of fiber, vitamin C, um, vitamin A, B6, folate, and potassium. Um, and all of these vitamins and minerals are necessary to help our body to function normally. Um, we need them. And also vegetables like peppers and onions and other non-starchy vegetables can, um, they're really nutrient dense. So they provide a lot of nutrients with not a lot of calories. So they kind of help to add volume to the meal and help you to get full quicker on um, less calories. So that's why adding more vegetables is a really great option um, for a healthier meal. So I'm just gonna give this a quick stir. See how it's cooking. All right. Okay. Um, and then we already talked about it a little bit, but the whole grain pasta. Um, whole grains are a great source of fiber, uh, B vitamins, iron, and magnesium. And I have um the box here when you're looking at whole grain um options it's definitely important to check the ingredients sometimes um like breads for example will say whole grain or whole wheat uh, but they're not actually whole grain or whole wheat um so a way to check this is you can just go to the ingredients they're usually under um the nutrition label and if the first ingredient is whole grain or whole wheat flour, then you know it's actually a whole grain product. Um, but sometimes the advertisement or names of things can be a little bit misleading. So you always want to check that to make sure you're actually getting a whole grain product. Um, and so these whole grains are great because they provide lots of fiber, lots of vitamins and minerals, that regular, that regular, um, people that regular pasta doesn't have. And fiber is super important for heart health. It actually has the opposite effect than saturated fat. So fiber helps with, um, fiber helps with um, decreasing our chances of developing heart disease. So fiber can kind of offset a little bit of that saturated fat. It works in the body to lower blood cholesterol, specifically our um, LDL, which is the bad cholesterol. And some studies have shown that fiber can also help to lower um, blood pressure and inflammation in the body as well. Um, so fiber's really great. And overall, this meal is really balanced and non-starchy vegetables, starches, and protein. Um, when we think about a plate, um, we usually want about half of our plate to be non-starchy vegetables. And then we want a quarter, just a little bit like right there to be starches and the other quarter to be proteins. Um, so what are some sources of these? Non-starchy vegetables include things like broccoli, um, Peppers, onions, like we had today, cauliflower, string beans, asparagus. Um, what else? Some lettuce from salad, tomatoes. So these are all examples of non-starchy vegetables. And then starches that we want to take up about a quarter of our plate are things like potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, rice, 
pasta, bread, um, quinoa, couscous, things like that. And then um, the other quarter, we want to be lean proteins, which we already talked a little bit about, um, things like chicken, turkey, fish, shrimp, um, Greek yogurt, nuts, legumes, beans, those are all really great options of lean protein. Um, so when we're eating a mixed dish like this, it's a little bit harder to visualize that um, plate, but um, it's something to think about in terms of how much of each different food group we might be getting in our meal and what would be appropriate. Um, so like I've already mentioned, this meal is a really great source of fiber and protein. And these are really helpful in weight maintenance because they help you to stay full longer. So protein really helps with um, satiety, which makes you feel full and makes you feel not hungry for a period of time after a meal. And, um, and that makes you, you know, like not snack after meals, not get hungry too soon. So protein is a really important component of meals. And then fiber also helps you to stay full longer because it slows your digestion down. Um, so this keeps you fuller longer. And it, um, and as we already talked about, fiber is really important for heart health as well. So fiber is overall really good for us. Um, but something to note and to think about is if you're going to be trying to increase your fiber consumption or switching to whole grain products, if you normally eat regular, um, you want to consider that soluble fiber holds on to water. So you want to also increase your water or fluid intake you could become um, constipated from eating too much fiber with not enough fluid. Um, so you want to make sure to think about that a little bit. Um, fiber and water together kind of help um, things move through the digestive system. And then just some suggestions for making any recipe or dish healthier. Um, this, you know, years ago was a recipe that I originally found and I've like tweaked it so much over time to try to make it healthier, like using skim milk and whole grains and adding more vegetables and um, using the spice mix without sodium, just things like that. Um, and these are things you can do for any recipe. You could switch um, some of the butter or oil to um, nonstick spray. You don't have to switch all of it. Maybe you could half it and do the other half with the, um, with spray or something like that. And then even um, using like olive oils or veg or um, like avocado oil or sunflower seed oil, things like oils like that tend to have um, more healthier fats in them compared to butter. Um, like we already mentioned, choosing whole grains over regular grains, this provides more fiber and nutrients and then choosing reduced fat or skim dairy products. This reduces the total calories and the saturated fat content of the meal. And then uh, choosing spices and seasonings that don't have any salt added is a really great option um, to help control blood pressure or prevent hypertension. And then lastly, just if you see a recipe, you can switch out any protein source. Um, so if it has a more um, fatty protein source, you could switch it out with a plant-based source, um, something like chicken, turkey, fish, or um, you know some of those plant-based sources we talked about, like beans, uh, tofu, tempeh. And again, this just helps to decrease the saturated fat, which will help um, our heart health. So let's see um, where this is at. So you can see here, this is bubbling a little bit. Um, the pasta is cooking pretty well. And the milk is thickening up a little bit. Okay. Um, so I think this probably has a few more minutes. So I just wanna tell you guys a little bit about some of the other recipes. Um, I'm going to share with you. Um, one of them is a lemon garlic shrimp recipe. And I really love this one because it tastes like a restaurant meal. 
um, but it's so easy to make. It only takes 15 minutes, um, really simple ingredients, and it comes out tasting so good. Um, another one is salmon and veggies, and this you actually cook in the oven, and everything gets cooked on one pan, so it's super convenient. Um, and I really like salmon because it's filled with um, lots of omega-3s, those healthy fats that are good for our heart, and um, has some potatoes and asparagus, but you could substitute those out for really any starch or vegetable that you want. So again, it's really versatile. Um, one of the other recipes is slow cooker beef and broccoli. And this is a great recipe for anyone who is super busy. Um, I know life can get pretty hectic right now, having kids home or other family members. And with the winter just around the corner, I love using my slow cooker. It kind of warms things up a little bit and makes it feel a little homey inside. Um, and I think like to this winter with people being home a lot more, um, it's really a great time to use your slow cooker because you could start something at midday and it'll be ready by dinner time. Um, so this beef and broccoli recipe is super easy. You just throw everything into the pot and leave it for a few hours and it comes out tasting um, delicious. And then um, another one is vegetarian chili. Um, I haven't met many people who don't love a nice cup of hot chili on a cool day and with the cold weather coming right around the corner um, it's definitely good to have a vegetarian chili recipe um, if you want some more protein in the recipe you can add ground turkey or ground chicken um, and then you could also add some meat alternatives um, i've added beyond crumbles to this before just to get some extra protein and i've actually tricked a lot of people into thinking that it was real meat in there. They didn't know the difference. Um, I think you mostly just taste all the vegetables and spices. And so it's a really great meal to add a meat alternative to. If maybe you don't like it that much, um, you don't really even taste it in this recipe. Um, and then the last one is a Mediterranean salad, which is um, a really versatile meal. You can eat it as a whole meal. You could eat it for lunch. You could eat it as a side. You could add grilled chicken to it. Um, but even alone, it's filled with lots of vitamins and minerals from tons of vegetables. Um, it's a great protein source from chickpeas, and it has lots of healthy fats from olives and from an olive oil-based dressing. So um, we'll definitely share those recipes with you guys, and I hope you might try a few of them. Um, they all um, are really great. And this is looking like it's oops, about done. So I'll put this into a bowl and share with you guys the final product. Okay, so you can see that um, the, let me just manipulate this little, you can see that the pasta cooked um, pretty well in the milk. Okay, and um, you can see it's like nice and colorful from the vegetables and yeah, it came out pretty good. So I hope that you guys will try it and maybe one of the other recipes and you enjoyed this so thank you all for tuning in and watching and um yeah thanks <laughs>